If you've ever had a kidney stone, you know they can be quite painful. In fact, 1 in 11 people in the United States have had a kidney stone. So why do we get them and how can they be treated? Here today to talk to us about recognizing the symptoms of kidney stones and how to effectively treat them is Dr. Ryan Miyamoto, a urologist with Baptist Medical Group. Good morning, Dr. Miyamoto. Good morning. Did I get that right? Yes. First of all, I wanted to make sure. Um, how are you doing? Uh, very well. Pretty good. good. I'm glad to hear it. And you're a newbie in town of Pensacola, so welcome to the community. Well, thank you very much. And I've heard you like it, so that makes me happy being a native. Yes, fell in love with the beach almost immediately. and Yeah, and it's it's not hard to do that. We do have beautiful beaches. Like I said, though, being from here, sometimes it's you know kind of loses its luster, but I think for most people, it's pretty exciting. Yes, and the people, <laughs> extremely friendly. So it's just been an easy move for us. And Good. Already starting to feel like home. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, so first question right out of the gate is to get us started. I want to know a little bit about you and your background as a urologist. Um, well, I grew up in Michigan and uh, um, I train my urology training was in San Antonio, Texas. Um, and then after residency, I uh, worked in Grand Rapids, Michigan for about five years. And then Baptist found me and, and uh, recruited me. And when I, when I came out here and learned about the Baptist uh, ho hospital system and got to know Pensacola or see Pensacola, um, really was at one of those jobs where if I didn't take it, I, I would always kind of mm -hmm. wonder about it. And now I'm here. Kind of my, my, the things that I'm kind of focus on in, within my specialty is, is uh, the oncology side of urology, but also kidney stones are, are, are something I, I very much like to treat. It's very rewarding. You like to treat kidney stones. Oh, yes. Just, <laughs> just because when those p people come in, they right. are absolutely miserable or they're about to be miserable. So right. it's very rewarding knowing that I've prevented something mm -hmm. very miserable for for that person. Yeah, well, that's yeah. really awesome. I mean, then you you kind of get to, being a nonprofit, I understand this feeling too, but you kind of get to lay your head down at night knowing you've helped somebody else, which I'm sure is a really good feeling for yes. you. Yes, that's <laughs> for the sure. reason why I became a doctor. So. Uh, well, awesome, that's so cool. So let's get right into it then and talk about the kidney stones, which obviously you're, you're pretty passionate about. Um, so what are kidney stones? What are some of the different types? Well, kidney stones are kind of like how they sound. They are these rocks that form in the kidney. Um, and uh, really, people probably make more kidney stones than they know, but, but you don't even know that it's there until it starts to obstruct the urinary tract. Um, mm -hmm. And what you feel is that kind of buildup and pressure behind the stone. And what that'll feel like is this very severe, sharp pain, usually in your back and kind of radiates around the side and can, uh, can travel down into the groin area. Um, and it comes and goes because usually that stone isn't obstructing all the time. Sometimes it'll move a little bit and the urine can pass through, but then almost all of a sudden, once again, that, that pain will come, come on until either the stone passes or it's taken out. Oh, and it just makes me, it just kind of makes me a little nauseous thinking about that. Because, yep. I mean, anybody I've known that's had a kidney stone and being around them, it's, it's painful for me to see them in that much pain. Yes, I've actually had a kidney stone. <laughs> really? Yes. So you can totally relate. Yes, absolutely. So <laughs> when, you know, the kind of usual course for, for uh, a lot of doctors, and it's the absolute right thing to do, is to tell the patient if they're not, um, if they're not in the hospital with pain and can't get them home, try to pass it for a few weeks. But because I know how it feels and because I know it could be a long two or three weeks of trying yes. to pass it, I always offer them treatment right away so they don't have to deal with it for a few weeks if I can I, you know schedule allowing but but yeah I just I really like to get them out of that <laughs> yeah. if I can and if they want two to three weeks of that kind of pain yeah because it comes because it comes and goes but in waves it yeah. kind of reminds me what like a toothache would feel like that's how I would relate it to yes, like what, worse maybe, than a toothache well yeah but of course, I'm sure. Yes. Um, so you were kind of you were speaking about treatment options during this process of two to three weeks of them experiencing this pain off and on. Does it eventually go away by itself? You're able to pass it. it pass the pain goes away as soon as the stone passes. And the things that kind of determine whether or not a stone is going to pass is how large it is, mm -hmm. um, and also where it is. Like if it's up by the kidney, I usually tell those people it's going to probably take a, a little while longer. Whereas if it's already down by the bladder, you know, tell them, you know, hopefully your, your 
you're, this is going to be behind you maybe in a week or so. Um, but um, if they ultimately decide for treatment, there are r really three main procedures out there. Um, one is uh, a shockwave lithotripsy where nothing's done on the inside of the body. It's a machine that sends real intense sound waves uh, and breaks up the stone, and then they pass out the fragments over the next few days. Oh, wow. So are you doing that on the abdomen? Um, um, yeah, kind of up in the abdomen yeah. and, and up in the kidney. If the stone is down by the bladder and down in the pelvis, it doesn't work very well because all the sound energy gets absorbed gotcha. by the bone. But if it's up in the kidney or up in that tube that's outside the pelvis, it's a very good procedure. And um, if... If it was the right procedure for me, that's where, the one I would choose because it's the one that really has the best kind of recovery time from. Um, well, and it kind of add, that begs the question too. Um, you mentioned the the pain that you feel in your back. So why is that exactly? I mean, if it's sort of in this area, why would you have back pain? Like, what's the? Well, the kidney is actually in the back. <laughs> okay. So. So, that just shows my knowledge. <laughs> yeah, so that's where you'll you'll feel the pain. It'll almost feel like like I, some people describe it as a knife in their back. Mm -hmm. I, the way that I would describe it is kind of feel like your kidney's in a vice. You'll feel like something is just squeezing your kidney and, and is unrelenting. Um, but um, uh, it also kind of triggers kind of a involuntary responses so you feel nauseated you, you, you oftentimes they're they're, they're vomiting um, and then uh, once again it comes and goes it's all kind of a response to the obstruction mm -hmm. um, if the sh uh, shockwave lithotripsy isn't a good procedure because either the stone is too big or it's already in the pelvis then uh, the kind of next inv uh, least invasive procedure is what's called a ureteroscopy where there are no incisions the procedure is basically driving a scope into the bladder and then into the tube, finding the stone, breaking it up with the small laser, and then taking all the fragments out. Um, usually we'll leave a stent, which is a tube that goes from the kidney down to the bladder. Um, and that just kind of helps keep the, the system open mm -hmm. until uh, the kind of swelling and edema and spasms pass away from the after effects of the procedure. Um, I usually keep it in for a few days to a week or so. Sometimes it needs to stay in longer. And that stents can sometimes be as miserable or as yeah, com uncomfortable as a stone, imagine. but at least you know the end is in sight. Mm -hmm. um, and then if it's a really big stone in the kidney, the biggest procedure we do for kidney stones is, uh, is a procedure called a percutaneous nephrolithotomy. Wow, that's a mouthful. It is. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a pretty, um, pretty big surgery. Um, not as big as what we used to do. Um, some uh, before kind of the the new technology came about, people would actually make it open up the entire kidney, take out the stone, and have to repair the entire wow. kidney. So it's much better than than what it was, right. you know, many many years ago. But um, um, basically, we're going in through the back. We we find the kidney with an X-ray and and insert the needle into a kidney, and then over that needle we pass wires, and over the wires we dilate a track so we can go in with bigger instruments and remove. Um, remove the, the stones that are really big in the kidney. And kind of the cutoff for, for that procedure is if a stone's greater than two centimeters. Wow. So when you kind of compare the number of people who can just pass it naturally versus maybe needing a treatment option, what is more common? Are most people just able to kind of get through it? <laughs> so for perspective, so the treatments for kidney stones, they've really only been around for maybe uh, 30, 40 years. And the 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 kind of instruments that have allowed us to do this have only been, have only been really really refined in the last you know 20 years or so so the thousand years before people would pass the stones so if you do nothing these, these you will eventually pass a stone you just can't you, you just you don't know if it's going to take a few days you don't know if it's going to take a few weeks mm -hmm. you don't know if it's going to take a few months ooh it could go that long really it can ooh. yes but ultimately, if you do nothing, they will usually pass unless it's too big. And then, mm. um, but that is a pretty rare circumstance. So wow, ooh, that doesn't sound like fun at all. No, it's <laughs> it's uh, trying to pass it is it's not a it's not a fun experience. But you know, some people they just want to do everything they can to avoid a surgery, and mm -hmm. I respect that. But once again, I always offer them kind of a relief as soon as we can get it to them. Right. Well, and speaking of your patients, how do you know from patient to patient whether or not it's time for them? to come in for a treatment option, if they're willing or, I mean, I, 
if, if it were me, I'd want to do it immediately. Let's, let's not experience any pain if we don't have to. So there are a few things that make a kidney stone an emergency. If, if you're having a fever with a kidney stone, then you need to decompress the kidney right away or, or get, get drainage from the kidney because that infection can get into the system very quick and, and those patients get septic and, and uh, actually have a, a life-threatening infection. So really, when we say do it right away, unless, if they're coming in through the emergency room and, and, we, and we admit them to the hospital and we can't get them home because of pain control, we'll do it right away. Um, if, uh, if, if it is an infection, then we'll either place a tube in their, in their kidney and their back to, to drain the infection for a few weeks and then come back and take care of the stone or place that stent mm -hmm. um, in for a few weeks and, and allow that infection to drain into the bladder and then uh, um, treat the infection for a few weeks and then go back and treat the stone um, through whichever way is appropriate. But in terms of how quickly we do it, usually, you know, usually we do it on an elective basis um, and try to get it on on our, on our next available surgery day, which mm -hmm. is usually um, within a week or so. Gotcha. So unless it's an emergency, the, qu uh, the quickest we can do it is usually within a week or so. Well, kidney stones is obviously a very common thing, um, and so I'm sure folks are going to have questions. And I want to appreciate you, like say I appreciate you first, just be, pardon my ignorance about the human anatomy, apparently not knowing where the <laughs> kidney was. <laughs> but um, if anybody does have questions, uh, could you share the phone number or website or something that they can get in contact with you? I think we'll have it on the screen. I know you're still kind of new to Baptist and may not have the number memorized yet. But. Um, I I do not have the That's fine. The we'll have it on the screen. Memorized. So if they do um, have questions and they want to call you, they can do that. But thank you again so much uh, for coming on and, again, educating me on the human anatomy. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> really appreciate it.